and welcome to the painting demo with the Izaro watercolor paints. The technique demonstrated in this video can also be found in my online workshop The Lady in Watercolor and Mixed Media. You will find the link below this video. I'm going to use this paint um, to, to paint this uh, face a little bit more. And um, I really hope it's kind of tough <laughs> to um, to film with my um, phone this way because I don't really know if um, I can't see what I'm doing, which is, I don't like very much. So this is the raw umber that I like to use for um, shading. And at a later stage, I might add a much darker color for shading. But you know, this is like, um, I'm taking it easy. As you go along, not too much uh, of this just yet. Um, what I've noticed about this paint is that it, um, I used the magenta and the chartreuse and the steel blue. And what's really fantastic about this paint is that um, I had to use my eraser in the um, in the sketch a couple of times, and it was no problem. It didn't lift off the paint at all, which was really great to notice because some brands have the problem that when you that you can lift previous layers of paint the moment you use your eraser so this paint does a wonderful job and also now in layering I don't know if you guys can see that but um, the paint stays put which is pretty fantastic And this raw umber is not very dark, but as you can see, that's actually kind of wonderful. I work wet in wet, but I don't like using too much water. So now I have a little bit more control because the paint is not super intense. And that means that I can Um, I have quite a bit of control over what I'm doing here and control is nice some people who start out doing watercolor they don't like that they don't have so much control as you do over let's say acrylics which is the go-to um, paint for any control freak really because you can control everything with acrylics and uh, I quite enjoy the um, the uncontrollability <laughs> if it's not a word then I've just found one out I like the uncontrollability the unpredictability too of the um, of watercolor paints so Now I'm going to take a little bit of the sepia and as you can see 
you know, it's really easy to smoothen out the uh, lines with this paint. It just behaves so well. I'm really, really fond of this paint. I'm just checking if yeah, it's still in the right place. Um, I'm really fond of this paint. I'd never expected to find a paint like this that would still surprise me. There are a couple of brands I never tried. I didn't try Holbein. I didn't try Holbein yet because it's just too expensive. I'm financing all the paints that I try myself. So I'm not investing, you know, I'm not importing such expensive paints. Um, if one day, um, same happened with, with the M. Graham paints. Um, one of my viewers really wanted me to review the M. Graham paints. So she sent me some a little sample of her colors which is why how I was able to review them um, but other than that I know quite a few brands and uh, how they behave how you can compare one to the other and uh, These paints are way up at the top of the paints that I've used. They really, really are. Um, so that's something really special. Because I never expected that. And look, their daily life comes in. <laughs> I have a washing machine to turn off, so I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to fast forward this uh, video in a minute because it's not going to be too interesting to watch all of this real time. I just wanted to show you that I really, really like working with this paint. Those are things you can tell from making a swatch, you know. You don't always have to uh, okay so um, I need some lips here so I'm using the magenta for the lips because that is the uh, pink that I used for the in 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 the stain so I'm gonna bring that color back. Trying to limit myself a little bit to um, the colors and even adding just a little bit of magenta to the face as well. There was already a magenta undertone, so I don't need too much of this, you know, just a little bit to. Uh... Whoops. Oop. Okay. Now I want just want to keep it a little bit light. It's just how it just needs to be a little bit of a um how shall I say it? How should I call it? It's gotta be a glow. Then, she's going to have green eyes like mine, and I'm using the chartreuse as a, uh, as a first color, and let's see, mm. I am going to use I'm deliberating what white I will use. 
I often use white gouache, but white gouache is not really fantastic. So I'm going to try my Derwent drawing pen here. Oh. Hmm. No, I need to go over that with some gouache. That was not very impressive. Okay. Now the eye stands out much, much more. I see some hard lines appearing here. I'm a little bit allergic to hard lines, so just go over that with my wet brush and that's it. So now back to the raw umber. Because I used some sepia for some hearts for some dark shading, and now I need a little bit of raw umber for a lighter shading color. The neck tends to be a little darker than the face. Okay, I'm going back in with some brighter magenta, some darker magenta for the upper lip. I'm not putting it on the lower lip because that's where the sun or where the light will always be. We can just a very vague line perhaps but oh Trying to mind a video and paint at the same time. Multitasking. Yay! <laughs> okay. Now I need a dark colour and I'm going to use the Van Dyke Brown because it's so dark. And um, I'm going to use that for the eyebrows. not using a lot of water there. I'm doing that on purpose so it's just want some very quick and thin scribbles. And now with these very hard lines you can see the balance is completely gone. So I need to start adding more dark lines. That's kind of harsh. Turning that down with just a little bit of water. Okay. Mm. I want a rather dry brush for this kind of work. This is a very intense paint and um, uh, 
that requires a little bit of tweaking of the tip of my brush to get it exact and I got some thick lines here that I don't like very much but I'm okay okay and now I want to go back to the steel blue no hold on I need a tad of magenta not too much but there is an ear I want to get, put some magenta on too and some raw umber I am not using raw sienna here uh, the raw sienna here that I usually use for skin tones Because in the cloud that I'm using, that would become too peachy. And I don't want peach. I just want it to be a tad darker when I apply the magenta. And I want to apply only a little magenta. It shouldn't become pink. It's just a little bit of, a little bit fleshy. It is way too pink. So I add more water. This person's got a big earlobe. Okay. And now I'm moving into the steel blue and diving into the hair. It doesn't have to be realistic, you know, so this is just a quick, I like the structure in here, so I don't want to, to ruin that with, um, uh, how can I keep this structure, it's kind of difficult. Mm. I notice this spiral shape in here. So I really would like to keep that sense of a spiral in there instead of instead of painting normal hair. Cuz that's what happened when I painted. So I'm trying to use whatever the paint did trying to use that in, in this piece. I like it when spontaneously things start happening. By the way, the, um, the paper that the swatches are on are Canson, Moulin du Roi, the King's Mill, and um, it's fabulous paper. I've never used that before, but I'm certainly going to look into that because it seems absolutely fabulous. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the steel blue, still, I like it, and it doesn't matter if it flows into another section, it's perfectly okay when it does, because I like to see the watercolour do its own thing, 
I just said the control is great when you're working with watercolour but I think the best watercolour art is made by those who dare let go of the control. So I try not to control too much of the effect. Okay. Oops, I was a little bit too enthusiastic across my own line there. So I really want to just paint the illusion of hair. I'm not looking for realism here. Okay, so... I have to be careful not to put my hand down in the wet paint. <laughs> Normally I don't work like this when I film. So I'm a bit... I've lost my round lines a bit, but okay, no problem here. Mm. Okay, and then <clears throat> the last bit of hair. What I notice is uh, there was just here, there is a, a dot of, there is a drop of water on there. When I press down, you can see it, I didn't pick up any paint. So this paint sinks into the paper very, very well, which is fantastic when you're layering. I love layering my paints very much. It's one of my, um, I think my most used technique in my illustrations, in my art is layering. And um, in order to be able to lay very well, you need paints that do not, um, are not picked up very easily by uh, By the next layer so this is a, a characteristic that's very important to me um, for my work so I really like this paint it's so well behaved and uh,
it's absolutely great fun to work with and I am I'm definitely gonna buy some colors um, all the colors I've been working with now are really great and uh, It's tough painting and drawing at the same time. <laughs> okay. Oh, one last bit. Hmm. This is now a little bit dark, so when I really re-wet it, it allows to be picked back up again, and I'm spreading the paint a little bit more. And now I need to do a little bit something about the ear and I figure that the oxide purple might make good shading for the ear although it may be a little bit bright let's try Okay. <laughs> mm. This is not a hmm about the pink. I'm just not really pleased with the ear that I drew. So those things happen, right? And now I need a little bit of chromium oxide for the eye. Let's see if yep, you're still seeing exactly what I'm doing. Now I have to <laughs> move just a little bit closer. Yeah, because I had to see what I was doing. I think I'm almost there really. I'm going to add a little bit of the sepia. Um, oh no, hold on, stop. I'm not adding sepia. I'm adding a little bit of the steel blue to that ear. To the shading. I think it's a daft ear. I think the color of the ear is a little bit too different from the rest of the face to my liking. So I'm going to do a little something about that. I might mess it up completely. It happens, you know. But that's okay too. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's not as... But something needs to be different, namely, there has to be some light here and there. Okay. Now over the um, over the magenta, I'm turning down the magenta with some more of the uh, raw umber. The raw umber is a really good colour to to insinuate age. It's still warmer than than, than any grey. Just adding a little touch of depth. The um, the um, steel blue is absolutely great for shading. It's a very interesting color because there is some brown in it, and that that makes it absolutely perfect for this kind of work because even though it is a blue I often use blue for shading as well especially when I'm shading older faces where the lines and wrinkles are much deeper than in younger faces um, <laughs> it's kind of a hard line but um, this is a very very good color to do so I must have this paint. This is beautiful. I'm going to be using this one so much. Okay, so I'm going to stop. I mean, it's not perfect, but this is like a demo, you know? Good enough. <laughs> I might tweak it a little bit here and there. <laughs> Oh, do you know the feeling where you just can't stop? You feel you must go on because there is so much you can, you you see so much potential and you just want to keep painting and painting and oh, anyway. I might tweak it a little more and then post later on how it ended up. So I hope you've seen what this paint can do and how I like it and um, to me it's really interesting paint and I want to uh, seriously explore it especially some colors that are my favorite so um, well I hope that you found it very interesting as well and um, thank you for watching oh, and by the way of course the links will be below the video so thank you for watching bye